it was really difficult watching um, this strong man just slowly fade away. And it's a comfort to know that he's no longer in pain anymore. For my dad, death actually was a mercy. And so he's no longer in pain. There's nothing that I can do that I haven't done concerning my dad. There's no more that I can do. There's nothing more that can be said. There's nothing more that I can expect from my dad either. It's done. And I know that sounds hard, a hard concept to get, but in accepting that that's done, it also gave me the courage to start moving forward. There's no more that I could do. There's no more that I could say. There's no more that I could wish. I have to let, let it go. But then it also gave me perspective for me living because I'm still alive. And I know that at some point, don't know when, because that's the uncertainty, of, of being in a world where death also reigns. I don't know when that will be, but I thank God that I still have the opportunity to make it right, to live a life that is pleasing to God, to live a life that is helpful and meaningful to others. Today is still the day of salvation for me. Today is still the day of salvation for us that are alive. And we need to treasure these times that we have. We kind of like have in our head that, you know, we should be living for X amount of years. The reality is, is that that's not necessarily so. Psalms 90 does give us, you know, an idea that three score and 10, maybe four score, 80 years by reason of good health. And with modern medicine and so forth that's going on, people are, are living a little longer than that. Some of the quality of life of people that live on is questionable. But nevertheless, you know, we've kind of like got this idea that we will just be here forever. And then it comes as a shock when death is in our face. The reality, though, if we go by the scripture, is that death is basically here and that we should expect it, which gives us the more earnestness to live for God, for others, so that when that time comes, because it is expected, that we do not fear, that we do not run. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get into trouble for saying this, but even during the recent pandemic, where the news was pushing death everywhere, death, 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 death that people panicked, became really afraid and made decisions, fell in line with, you know, what the government was saying. And even, dare I say, put their trust more in what the science is saying than what God is saying in his word. In the end times, it will be the threat of death that will be used against God's people to get them to comply. So it's important that we understand what God says about death, the promises that he 
has made for those who believe and trust in him. To place our loved ones in his care and in his keeping, trusting that the righteous God, the righteous judge, will do all and for all for us. And so our loved ones can be at rest and thank him for the mercy that there is hope, you know, resurrection morning, that we will see them again. But for now, we must continue to live. We are required to live um, and to move forward. Before I go into just basically how, you know, tips and terms of how to move forward, I just want to give the opportunity for uh, anyone to say anything or to ask a question or anything. Is it okay? I'll just move on. Yes, yes, you can just move on. Okay. So when we are facing grief and loss, we need comfort. Yeah. You see, death wasn't really the plan in the sense that, you know, God gave us this. He didn't. He gave us life and he gave us good to be in connection and relationship with him and with each other forever. So death is like this intruder that has come in. And it's separating loved ones, it's causing us to be anxious and fearful. And so we need comfort when facing grief and loss. And we have, you know, some promises and assurances like what's on the screen at the moment. We read it in uh, the scripture reading this morning uh, or earlier, rather, I should say. That blessed be God, even the God of even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble with the comfort wherewith ourselves are comforted of God. God promises in Isaiah, as one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you. John 14, 18 tells us, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. You know, the Lord promises that in the end, he's going to swallow up death in victory and wipe tears away from our faces. We read these words, we may even hear them often, but how honestly, and that's just a question to ask ourselves, do we actually believe them? Are we really experiencing that comfort I mean, God? the God of all comfort. Are we receiving his comfort? And oftentimes, if we are honest, there is a part of us that may say, no, I don't actually, I hear it. I know it. But somewhere I'm not actually receiving it. There's a bit of a disconnect. And especially when it comes with grief, with death, even the expected death, certainly with the unexpected death, there's almost like we become blocked. You know, you sit in the funeral service and you hear all these scriptures that are said, and it's like it's passing over your head. It's very difficult. Is it really penetrating in here? And that could be as a consequence of us having what we call blocked emotions. Some of the reasons why we uh, can fail or not quite grasp the comfort of God is because we ourselves have not really been comforted. 
We don't know what comfort really is. We're quite used to just getting on with things. Yeah. I mean, even the way how the UK overall handles the subject of death is almost like it's in, an inconvenience, you know, unless, of course, it's like, you know, Queen Elizabeth II that just died recently, then all the pomp and the grandeur and the whole nation is being um, encouraged to mourn. But on an individual level, no. Oh, so and so's died. Oh, I'm so sorry. Better get on with my shopping, you know? It's just, that's it. A little bit of an inconvenience. In the UK, there is no statutory bereavement leave. It's down to the uh, discretion of your employer. And if they do grant you leave, then, you know, maybe it's just a couple of days. And then they expect you to be back at work, back at your job. And so quite a few people take leave as sick. They go off sick. They have to put in the sick note. And that in itself can also complicate the grieving process because they're now having to say that they're sick and they're not sick. They are actually uh, having a normal, natural, res emotional response to loss. But to get that time to grieve, you have to say you're sick. That just goes to show a lot of how that scientific view that, well, you come from nothing, so you go to nothing. Life doesn't really have that value. And, you know, while you're alive, the fittest of the fittest survive. So you got to try and keep up. We don't know how to comfort. We don't even know how to mourn. Sometimes those emotions get blocked because of how we perceive them. We can label emotions as either being good or bad. Death usually brings out what we kind of like classify the bad ones brings out fear, sadness, loneliness, and anxiety, anger, unforgiveness, guilt. Sometimes people are relieved. They feel actual relief that the person has gone. And then that also compounds into guilt as well because they feel relief that they're gone. And so these emotions, they get blocked within us especially unforgiveness and again that is when in um, working with clients who are presenting with lots of anxiety depression in particular and they they have suffered a loss they've suffered a bereavement that unforgiveness is one of those principal ones that seems to be there that fuels the, uh, or prevents the grief process rather from going naturally. It kind of like blocks it and prolongs rather than with the acceptance of the loss, the releasing of the loss, those emotions in time will dissipate unforgiveness holds on and this unforgiveness is usually found in three areas yeah unforgiveness is one of the things that locks the heart from receiving the comfort of God it also prevents comfort from being reached to us from other people who are trying to give us that comfort too there's unforgiveness towards the person who has died. You know, why did they die? How could they leave me? You know, sometimes we have placed a lot of dependency on these people. 
around us to be for us oftentimes what God alone should be. Um, and so they take up a huge part of our lives. And then when they die, we don't know what to do with ourselves. And we can get angry that they've left us and we can become bitter towards them that they've done that. Sometimes we are hoping that we can receive something from them. Maybe the love, especially when it's a parent, the love, uh, the acceptance, the, you know, encouragement. We hope to receive something from them and they die and we don't have it. And so we could become, you know, bitter again, unforgiving, especially if, you know, we were hoping that they would say sorry, that they would recognize what they had done to us. And I know that a lot of people talk about, you know, deathbed uh, confessions. The reality is that most people die without confessing anything. And so you're kind of like left hoping that maybe they might even on their deathbed acknowledge such. And they didn't. Or they didn't get the opportunity to put things right. And so they've passed on without being able to convey their uh, sorrow or apologies for what they may have offended somebody by. We can have unforgiveness towards ourselves. How many times, you know, he said, I should have done more. I wasn't there. I should have made that call. I should have done this. I should have done that. I was too busy doing this or busy doing that. And they died. I neglected to do a duty. And so we become hard on ourselves. We become unforgiving to ourselves. And that unforgiveness also blocks the comfort of God from receive, you know, being received. It also blocks the comfort of others being received as well. We can also have unforgiveness towards God for allowing this to happen. Hopefully, in explaining, taking the time to explain in the beginning what the biblical perspective of death is and what God, where God is in this, in terms of death, that it might explain why death is here, why it happens. And it's not so much that God is, a, you know, um, allowing this to happen to us out of no consequence or because he just feels like punishing us and taking away from us the things or the people that will make us happy. It's as a result of sin. And God working through his eternal plan for our eternal security and salvation has allowed this to be. And the Lord knows this. God himself knows because if we want to start chaining the thing back God sits as the one who has ultimate responsibility because God made humans with the ability to choose to choose to do right to choose to do wrong and so in understanding that God does have the ultimate responsibility. Again, reiterating that he did not give us death and evil. The Lord gave us life and good. And that is his continual and will always be his continual intent towards us. He says so in Jeremiah for the, you know, I know as the Lord says, the thoughts that I have towards you, 
of peace, yeah, of good. He wants to give us an expected end. There are no thoughts of evil in God's heart towards us at all. But ultimately, by making creatures humans with the ability to choose, God does take ultimate responsibility. And he did that on the cross. He took everything. He subjected himself to be mistreated by the creatures, by the humans that he made. He allowed himself to be mistreated. He allowed himself to go to that cross and die. He's taken ultimate responsibility. And if the death of God on the cross is not enough, is not enough for us to release any unforgiveness in our hearts that we may have towards others, or towards God himself, then rightly so, we are choosing that we need to pay the penalty ourselves, And that's where we'll end up. So part of working with death and loss is about being honest deep down. And if there is any uh, unforgiveness, to let it go, to give it to God. The Lord already knows and he's already paid the price for it. So give it to him, it belongs to him anyway, that he may release his comfort and his peace and his grace into your lives. We struggle also with grief and loss because of the rules that we may have about our emotions, you know? I've just put a few on the screen that are quite common that we kind of like think in ourselves, I must not be a burden to others. We might not feel safe to express how we're truly feeling, what we're going through our minds. Others of us may have that martyr complex and say, I must be there for others. And so you just keep going, you know, because I've got to keep the show on the road. I'm alone is a, another one. No one can really care or understand about this. Can I please say, that Jesus does. Jesus understands completely. And we may not be there in all honesty, but Jesus has walked that path. Our Lord has gone through that. He knows what it is to be on the side of death. And Father God, he knows what it is to lose someone close and precious to you in death our father understands and that's the thoughts that we need to be encouraging i'm not alone god understands he does care i don't have to set this example of composure all the time the Lord wants me to rest in him. Let's allow ourselves to rest in him. But again, this interplay, as I said, between our thoughts, our feelings and our behaviours, they can kind of like either help us to process the grief or they can keep us stuck in grief patterns. 
So in closing, coming towards the end, because I know I've spoken quite a bit, some brief strategies that we can look at, you know, that can help us managing our, our losses, facing death, living in a world where death is around. So for strategies for our thoughts, determining to agree with God's perspective on death, to meditate on healing, consoling verses of scripture, even take it as a medicine, if need be, you know, three, four times a day. Um, I know there's a lot in the world about mindfulness and all of this stuff, but we are called to meditate. It's true. But meditate on those healing, consoling verses of scripture. Focus the mind on positive things. When we're going through grief, our mind is sore. The heart is sore. So try and stay on positive things stay away from bad news or triggers you know that can pull you into a, a downward spiral when we have a broken leg we put our broken leg in a cast and we don't put pressure on that leg on and giving it time to heal and then we start putting a little bit of pressure on it bit at a time bit at a time bit at a time well, this is the same way, okay? It's not our broken leg, but it's our broken heart. We need to give that time to heal. And so we need to put a cast around it, yeah? A cast around our thoughts. A cast around our mind. For those also that are fearful of death, it's a strategy that we kind of like use in service as well. We encourage people to write their own obituary, you know, um, what you would want people to say about you when you die. Because that's the one thing we're sure, right? As Ecclesiastes 9 has told us, the living know that they shall die. So, okay, what do you want people to say about you when you die? And so in this way, we are helping the person to focus on the fact of death being a reality. Because anxiety just wants to run away from it. and It just creates more and more anxiety. But when you realize that, then you can also start focus on the living aspect as well. Because if this is what I want people to say about me, then I've got to live it. Yeah. I've got to live those things. For the emotional part, again, is that honesty with yourself, your honesty with God, address unforgiveness. Don't address those things, what, you know, just let them go, give them to God. You can process emotions by journaling, you know, writing, drawing, being creative, doing something. Uh, to express how you're feeling you can talk with others acknowledge and accept the feelings which is a real primary one that because they're there yeah sometimes we get really fatigued and tired mentally we lose in concentration it's because we're suppressing yeah we don't want to face the grief we don't want to face the sorrow we want to be strong right sometimes we feel that if i cry if i let go i'll never stop well that's not really true because that's not how emotions work they will just last for as long as if they're given free expression they will just dissipate it's when we block them that they hang around a lot longer. So acknowledging and accepting the feelings is crucial. Praying alone and with others, again, you know, um, it was really difficult during the pandemic because of all the government uh, restrictions. People were left alone at a time when they needed others around them. And those thoughts, don't get challenged and so they kind of like solidify 
But now we need to, it's not too late to reach out to others that I'm struggling. I need prayer to reach out to God as well. I'm struggling. I need your help, Lord. Most of all, with the emotions is to give yourself time. You can't say, like I said, the emotions will dissipate, but I can't say to you that they'll go away in two days, five days, 10 days, 10 months. They will go away if you give yourself time. Don't expect it to be over with, you know, at that time. And final day for behaviors, do or learn something new. You know, that's a way of, you know, appreciating the life that you have right now. You're still here. You're still alive. Meet people, socialize, but I've put within limits because I don't, there's the other uh, side of the coin whereby because you're so afraid of being alone that you're always in the company of somebody and you turn into what we kind of like call a social butterfly, flip, 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 flip. But that's not helping you processing your grief. So we do encourage, yes, socialize, but within limits, make sure um, that you are pacing your daily activities and routines. Again, there will be times where you don't feel like doing nothing, but some things need to be done. Like as I've listed down before, you know, eating, personal care, shopping, paying bills. Take your time. They all don't have to be done in one day, but kind of like, you know, pace your things that you need to do. If I'm going to go shopping, I go shopping today and that's it. I can't manage anything more. That's fine. You know, if it's just okay, then I need to just sort out some of the household bills. That's it for the day. Don't do anything more. That's fine. You know, pace it. Follow the action, not the mood because you won't feel like it a lot of the time, but they need to be done. If you've completed an obituary, as I said before, you start putting that into action. Focus on, you know, living. It is hard when we have lost someone. It's hard when we lose someone unexpectedly as well. But we also need to remember that in this life, death is the portion. That we will lose people in death. And ultimately, that we'll lose our own life in death as well. And so we need to be focused more on the positives in that God has made this plan for us. That we entrust to him all that is temporary, which includes our loved ones, it includes our own finite life as well, that we entrust it all to him. And finally, just saying that you can't reach out for what's in front of you until you let go of what is behind you. And on the day that our loved ones passed, that was it. That was the line that was drawn for them. We are still living on. And we are still having to go forward. There is still life for us. But we need to sometimes let go, even of the ones whom we love because they are behind us. So that we can reach forward to what God has for us now, for the future, to live with the living. Doesn't mean that we forget those that pass. We will remember them. We will carry them in our hearts and in our minds always. But we have to come to a point 
where we realize that they are not coming back. And we need to move on. And we need to focus on our lives, the remainder of our lives that we have. Giving it to God, giving it to others, and for ourselves. So I hope, sorry if I've gone over time. I hope that there has been something in there for you, for the ones who have needed it, for those of us to help other people who are going through grief and loss. And um, I just hand it back over to the moderators. <laughs>